If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 1, Prologe. Firstly I want to declare that I don't own anything except the OC. Every other character belongs to the original creator slash owner. Figure of speech. Normal conversations. Sacred gear speaking, drag slash Albion. Ability used. System speaking. Where am I? How long I have been here? I can remember everything from my previous life clearly, but no matter how much I try I cannot remember my name. God slash supreme being, how did a soul get here? That is pretty odd. Who is there? Show yourself? God slash supreme being, I am someone that you people usually and simply call God. But I the supreme being. But I don't understand how a mortal soul like you survive in the void. Is this the void? I don't know how I got here, I just know that I died and I ended up here. God slash supreme being, I see, so you somehow escaped from the cycle of reincarnation. Since you have been strangled here for so long without losing your mind I will reincarnate you in a world and give you five wishes. Really? You can do that? Can I go to fictional world? God slash supreme being, of course I can do that who do you think I am? Yes you can go to fictional world you like so much in your previous life. Now ask away where do you want to go and tell me what your wishes are? I can ask for anything right? And I will like to go to the world of high school DXD. God slash supreme being, okay high school DXD. You know what knock yourself out with the wishes. Okay, can I think for a bit? God didn't answer but he nodded his head. After certain amount of time. Okay I am ready. 1. I want the power of vector manipulation of accelerator from a certain magical index. 2. I want a system with a store from which I can buy everything. 3. I want the gate of Babylon as my sacred gear including all the treasures of Gilgamesh. 4. I want Sharingan of Ataki Uchiha and Obito Uchiha combined which I can later upgrade to. Rin Egan through the system. 5. I want instant mastery skill. God slash supreme being, all of your wishes can be granted. Then off you go, JST remember this that you won't remember anything until you are 4 years old. Thank you for everything. After that he faded into light particles. God slash supreme being, I think I will not get bored for some time. Chapter 2 Birth and Training Location Underworld A woman can be heard screaming on top of her lungs in a room. Maids can be seen running to and fro from the room. The woman is seeming to give birth. A man could also be seen standing beside the woman with cold look. The name of the man was Razavan Lucifer. And the woman giving birth was human named Arado Misaki. Head maid, Thman push more harder the head is almost out. You bring some more water. She was encouraging the lady to give birth and ordering the maids. Soon the child came out he had hazel colored eyes. But the woman was still in labor. Head maid, Thman you can do it. Stay in there and keep pushing. Soon the second baby also came out but its eyes were different they were completely crimson red. The head maid handed both the childs to mother since she knew that she won't survive long. Because a normal human cannot give birth to devils, in doing so lot of vitality of the mother is used. Arado, aren't you too too much cute? I wish I could stay with you. Please grow up to be strong and responsible mans. Should you name them or should I? Raise a van, I don't care about all that. I only care if they are strong or not. Arado got a disgusted look but didn't say anything she just kept looking at both of her boys. Arado, you will be named Vali, looking towards hazel-eyed boy, and you will be named Sparta, she said looking towards the red-eyed boy slash our protagonist. She named them with a smile on her face and then she passed away with a smile on her face holding both of her boys within her arms. A slash N, I know I just made the character twin brother of Vali and even named their mother but it was needed so that I can continue the story with the plot that I have thought. And I am a huge fan of DMC series so I could not stop myself from taking that name. 4 year time skip. A lot has happened in these the 4 years. When Rezevim Livon Lucifer found out that his son has child with a human he was enraged because he thought that they were weak. When he found out the Vali had the divine dividing sacred gear he was really ecstatic. But then he found that Sparta had some unknown sacred gear he was excited but then he found that Sparta can manipulate devil energy to its core as the original Lucifer. At that moment he almost forget that they were half-breeds. Rezevim started training both of them harshly but soon found out that Sparta can learn everything very quickly so he went easy on him. But on other hand training for Vala became more intense. He thought Sparta has inborn talent and left him be just teaching him about how devils should be according to his ideals. 
During this Vala began detesting him more and more. Sparta was getting strong quickly he already had six devil wings. Razavan also started abusing Vala to get strong. Due to that Vala's hate for his family grew much more. Vala only cared and loved about his twin brother but was unable to show because Sparta was always better than him no matter what. So he made him into his rival. Vala had not woken up his sacred gear and their fourth birthday was nearing. During this time Rezavim made a sinister plan to kill Rezavan in front of both the twins on their birthday to awaken their sacred gears. Rezavim, Thman boys it's your birthday come I have gifts for you. Vali, what did you bring for us? Sparta, really grandpa show us what is it? No matter what they were both kids so they were still enthusiastic. Rezavim smiled and went in front of their father and stabbed him. Both kids' faces were full of horror. Rezavim then cut of Rezavan's head. Both the kids were crying. Vali, I will kill you. And he attacked Rezavim. He didn't take notice that he had two silver wings behind his back. He had activated his sacred gear divine dividing. Sparta on other hand had other reaction he was clutching his head hardly. He was feeling that his skull was being split open. After a few moments the pain vanished and he looked up to see a beaten up Vali on the ground the Rezavim laughing since his plan worked. At this moment only one thought came to Sparta's mind. Sparta. Chapter 3, Powers Unsealed. Don't mistake it Sparta already knew his father was A.S. Asterisk um. When he got the headache it restored his memories along with his powers. He also awakened his sacred gear but didn't attack Rezevim because he knew if he attacked now he will lose because Gate of Babylon was his sacred gear and Rezevim can cancel sacred gear. And he was not sure if he would be able to defeat Rezevim with his vector manipulation. He first needed to control all his master all his powers. With instant mastery it won't be hard but he didn't use his powers even a single time. Sparta when regained his memories he was really shocked to find that he was twin brother of Vala but he quickly calmed down since he was no a kid anymore eight let not mentally. Seeing his reaction Rezevim was really shocked that he didn't attack him to did anything noticeable. He knew Sparta was more powerful than Vala so he didn't lament on it. He thought he was not so attached with his father. But Sparta was thinking now that he had to get more strong. He knew that absolute strength is everything nothing stands against absolute strength. Rezevim, Sparta it's really disappointing that you didn't awaken your sacred gear. But I guess my fool of a son was not enough stimulus for you. Sparta. It's not that grandpa I just didn't get a reaction like brother. Rezevim, I see. Then it will be quite difficult for you from now on as your brother has awakened his sacred gear divine dividing the sparring sessions will get more difficult for you. Sparta, if it became easy it won't be fun. Grandpa what was the ability you used to cancel the sacred gear of brother? Sparta asked his grandfather with stars in his eyes. Hearing his first reply Rezevim got shocked but quickly put it back in his head as his genius grandson was enthusiastic about his ability. Rezevim, it's my ability called Sacred Gear C-A-N-C-L-R. Do you want to learn it? Sparta, yes when will you teach me should I get ready now? He asked again with stars in his eyes. Rezevim, no not now. You must be tired today. Take your brother to his room. I will show you tomorrow. Sparta got a downcast face but still complied. He carried his brother to his room then he went to his own room. He got on bed but immediately didn't WNET to sleep and started thinking what he should be doing next. It's not that Sparta hated Vala but also didn't like him much. In his previous life he already thought that Vala was nothing without his sacred gear. He admired him but also didn't like him that much at the same time. Sparta hated Issei to his core because every girl in the story was throwing herself to him but he just kept shouting Opai and Opai and did nothing. He really felt sorry for Drake. He was thinking all this when suddenly. Installing system 1%, 3%, 7%, 13%, 19%, 37%, 56%, 73%, 85%, 93%, 100%. Starting system. Hello host. Sparta, all of yours powers given by God was sealed UPTO this point so IT took me some time. What can I do for you host? Sparta, I have five functions. Status. Skills. Missions. Shop. Inventory. Sparta, opening status. Chapter 4, System. Name Sparta Lucifer. Age 4 slash. Race Human Devil Hybrid. Bloodline Original Lucifer, 63%. Tier 4, Level 58. Strength C. Defense D. Agility C. Wisdom S. Luck A. 
System Points 0 Abilities Vector Manipulation, LVL0 Devil Energy Manipulation, LVL53 Sharingan, Itaki Uchiha LVL0, Obito Uchiha LVL0 Sacred Gear Gate of Babylon, LVL0 Sparta, since I am a 4 years old kid I guess these parameters are what to be expected, but from my tier I can derive that I am stronger than high class devils. My defense would increase when I master vector manipulation completely I guess. Yes host you are correct. Sparta, hidden quest completed, ask about beginner's gift. Would you like to open IT now? Sparta, opening. Received bloodline purification pill X5. Send you beans X5. Space Manipulation Ability, Rank SS Mixed Martial Arts Manual, R-A-N-K-A Do you want to integrate the Space Manipulation Ability and Mixed Martial Arts Manual now? Bloodline Purify Action Pill and Senjua Beans are stored in inventory. Sparta, whoa I received some nice gifts I guess Space Manipulation is OP if I am able to completely master it. System will it hurt if I integrate both of them now? And what will happen if I purify my bloodline to 100%? No IT will not hurt to integrate the space manipulation ability in MMA manual. If you purify your bloodline to 100% you will be better than original Lucifer, you will not be hurt by holy objects, but purifying your bloodline will hurt like hell. Sparta, Sari Arli I will not be able to be hurt by holy objects. I guess I am broken. Integrating 1%, 13%, 35%, 58%, 72%, 80%, 90%, 100%, 100% integration completed. Sparta, Sparta, host doesn't needs to worry system will build a barrier inside your room so nothing can be heard from outside and yes you take the pills not only one is recommended now since you are only 4 years old. Sparta, integrating 1% 2% 3%. At this moment Sparta felt excruciating pain and could not keep his mouth shut. Sparta, a a a a a a a Chapter 5, Freaking Deadpool. In pain Sparta lost his conscious. After couple hours Sparta woke up and found that his body was full of sweat. Sparta, name Sparta Lucifer. Age 4 slash. Race Human Devil Hybrid. Bloodline Original Lucifer, 72%. Tier 3, Level 62. Strength C. Defense D. Agility C. Wisdom S. Luck A. System Points 0. Abilities Vector Manipulation minus 0. Devil Energy Manipulation. LVL L53 Sharingan, Itaki Uchiha LVL0, Obito Uchiha LVL0 Sacred Gear Gate of Babylon, LVL0 Sparta, OK nice increase in stats System how do I get system points? Host needs to complete missions Sparta, who gives these missions? How are the missions invoked? And please don't call me host you can call me Sparta System gives these missions depending on situations and timelines. Host's wish is acknowledged from now system will refer to you as Sparta. Sparta, that's okay I guess. System do you have a name? No Sparta I don't have a name. You can name me if you want. Sparta, acknowledged setting system name to Iris. Hidden quest completed, name the system. Rewards Senjua Beans X5. Rapid regeneration skill. Do you want to integrate now? Sparta, F yes I became freaking Deadpool. Yes integrate now. Integration completed. After that Sparta went to sleep since he was really tired. Next day he woke up and firstly went to check on his brother. His brother seemed to have healed completely. He woke up his brother then went to get freshen up and then went directly to training grounds. He was completing his daily routine workout when his grandfather came and meet him. Rezev him, so Sparta you really want to learn my ability come here I will show you. Sparta, okay grandpa coming. Sparta then went to reserve him and he them showed him his ability and began teaching him. Vali was also on the training field but he was completing his own training. Sparta quickly learned the ability but didn't show it to reserve him and kept practicing in front of him. Vali already began to hate reserve him to his core but for Sparta it didn't matter. Sparta always thought in his previous life the reserve him is a nice villain. Since Sparta was also not a naive hero he didn't hate him as Vala did. Sparta only knew that nothing means anything in front of absolute strength. Time skip two years. In these two years a lot has happened. Sparta has already mastered vector manipulation and got three tomes Sharingan but was unable to activate either of Mangekyo Sharingan. 
he also mastered his gate of Babylon but only showed Endiku the god sealing chains to reset him. He was really ecstatic seeing those chains. He also mastered space manipulation but didn't use it that much because he thought that it took away the fun from fighting. He was also a battle maniac. He also made an ability like Garganta to go from one place to another. He always thought it was really cool. Sparta now fully manipulate the devil energy. Vala's hate for Rezevim only kept increasing. He was planning to run away from here. But now he was more open to Sparta. Their bond as brothers became more strong in these two years. Sparta was standing on balcony and thinking all these. Sparta. Chapter 6, First Main Mission. Name Sparta Lucifer. Age 6 slash. Race Human Devil Hybrid. Bloodline Original Lucifer, 81%. Tier 3, Level 69. Strength B+. Plus. Defense C, SSS with Skills. Agility A. Wisdom S. Luck A. System Points 7068. Abilities Vector Manipulation, LVL 99+. Plus. Devil Energy Manipulation, LVL 99+. Plus. Sharingan, Itaki Uchiha LVL 37, Obito Uchiha LVL 41. Sacred Gear Gate of Babylon. LVL 99 plus. A slash N, vector manipulation if mastered it becomes an OP ability as shown in a certain magical index nothing can harm him magical attack or physical attack only if someone can cancel the ability then only it can be nullified. Hence I made the defense SSS rank. No matter how much strong the attacker is, it always has a vector. If there is a medium then vector can be easily manipulated. In these two years Sparta has hunted a lot of monsters that's how he got the system points and completing some secondary missions given by the system. He has also taken another bloodline purifying pill. Sparta was looking at his status screen then he thought he should get some magic so that it will be helpful in future. Sparta, opening store. Bloodlines. Abilities. Skills. Magic. Weapons. Sparta, the system then showed a screen full of different kind of magics. Dragon Slaying Magic God Slayer Magic Devil Slayer Magic Crash Magic Fire Magic And a lot of magics he was interested in God Slayer and Devil Slayer Magic. But then he remembered something, Guild Arts Magic it was also OP. Sparta, I will buy the Crash Magic. Iris show me the Crash Magic price. Opening Crash Magic Crash Magic 6000 SP Sparta because crash magic if trained correctly it becomes unmatched. Sparta, buying. Done, integrating. Done. Sparta, tomorrow is our birthday I guess Vala will soon run away from home. I quickly need to get ultimate class level looks like I am stuck in a bottleneck, maybe I need battle experience. I will ask my grandpa. And then Sparta went to take a bath before going to his room to rest and sleep. After getting on bed he was about to sleep but suddenly a screen popped in front of him. Mission, save Shuri and Akeno Heimjima. Details, save Shuri Heimjima from dying and help Akeno Heimjima to run away. Rewards, Barrier Breaker and 30,000 SP. Failure, Obito's Sharingan will be taken. Time limit, 1 week. Chapter 7, Sharingan. Sparta, what the hell how am I supposed to go to human world to save them? And the failing the mission is not acceptable. The punishment is quite severe. I will ask grandpa to let me go as birthday gift. Then he went to sleep. He woke up next morning then woke his brother then went to get freshened up. After that he went to work out. Then after some time Rezevim came to the field. Rezevim, tell me what do brats want on your birthday? Vali, drop dead. Sparta, I want to go to human world. Rezevim, Vali you are free to kill me that is if you can. And Sparta why do you want to go the human world between those insects? Vali, I will someday. Sparta, I just want to see the human world I heard there are a lot of things to try and want to try their food. Rezevim, okay I will allow that if you are able to land a hit on me. Sparta, alright get ready. Here goes nothing. He kicked the ground strongly and soon reached Rezevim and threw a punch. Rezevim parried the punch like pro and threw a punch himself. Sparta rotated his body and skillfully dodged the punch he was a slow doing it like pro because of the MMA manual he got two years fighting. He had a small body which was hard to track by a grown man and he was fully using that to his advantage. He started throwing punches in Rezevim's blind spot but he still got blocked and Rezevim kicked him in the gut which connected. It would be understatement to say that it was just painful. 
he felt like he was stabbed in the gut. He went about 1-5M before stopping. Vala was seeing all this in both awe and disdain. He felt awe because his brother was strong even though he was unable to hit Rezevim but he knew that Rezevim was a super devil so it was not easy to hit him. And disdain cause he thought his brother as his rival but he had left him behind. Rezevim was shocked that even after he hit him he was still smiling. He knew exactly what that kind of smile meant, it meant that he was loving the fight. His grandson was battle maniac. Sparta again kicked the ground and reached Rezevim and started throwing punches and kicks and quietly tried to ambush Rezevim from behind him using Endiku. It almost worked but Rezevim was a super devil, his instincts screamed at him, he knew what it was so he activated his canceller ability. Rezevim then punched hardly on Sparta's chest and he flew back and fell on the ground with a thud sound. Sparta got up and coughed up some blood. Sparta, Grandpa I almost got you. Rezevim, you really came close that moment. I am not a super devil just for title. At that moment Sparta's both eyes started bleeding and the tomos started rotating. He got a stinging pain from his eyes as 100 needles were being stabbed in his eyes. Then his eyes stopped rotating and the pain also stopped. His eyes had the pupil like a fan with three wheels. A sudden surge of power went into Sparta and he also got memories how to use those eyes. Sparta started smiling menacingly. Sparta, get ready for round two. Let's dance. Chapter 8, Round 2 Rezevim saw those eyes and he felt like those eyes can see through his soul. Sparta again kicked the ground and moved directly to Rezevim but now Rezevim became serious and punched him but his fist passed right through him. Both Rezevim and Vala were stunned seeing that Rezevim quickly moved back and attack with devil energy, he made many small spheres of demonic power and threw them on Sparta but he countered some of them by his own spheres and some passed right through his body. Vala and Rezevim both were shocked, but Rezevim calmed down and derived that it must be his eyes power. Sparta awakened the Obito's Sharingan. And as soon as he used it for one time it became maxed. He was able to use it completely but because he was using it for first time he would unable to use it for long time and also there was problem of getting blind. Rezevim was also a strong Lucifer hence he has very strong demonic power. Rezevim's ability was not as strong as Sparta but it was enough on top of it he was a super devil. Now Sparta attacked with this demonic power but Rezevim nullified them with his own demonic power. None of them giving them each other even a little space. But Sparta was getting teared he needed to end this quickly and he also had the risk that he would lose his sight more. Rezevim was more strong and fast but Sparta was countering that with his Sharingan ability. Then Sparta suddenly tried to suck Rezevim into his Kamui dimension but he quickly moved away. Using this moment Sparta punched him on the chest with all his remaining power unable to defend Rezevim got hit on the chest but it didn't do much damage to him. Sparta, looks like I win Grandpa. I really landed a hit on you. Sparta was smiling dryly now his eyes began to close, he then fell on the ground on his back. Rezevim, you have really got strong. Vala take him to his room and you disgrace learn something from him. Vala didn't say anything and picked his brother up and started walking towards their room. All this time during the battle Vala was gritting his teeth for being weak. Vala put his brother on his bed and lasted looking at him with determination in his eyes. Vali, I promise you brother I will also grow strong and beat you. I won't lose to you now. I will show you that I am strong enough to stand beside you. Goodbye brother I am leaving today. Vala that night ran away from the Rezevim's castle. Rezevim if wanted he could have stopped him but he didn't care enough and let him run away. He knew he will return someday. Sparta was woken up next day by the sunlight hitting him on his face. He got up slowly his whole body was aching. He slowly moved to get freshen up and then went to training ground to meet his brother and grandfather. But when he went there he found only his grandfather sitting. Rezevim noticed him. Rezevim, how is your body feeling? Sparta, it's really sore. BTW where is brother? Rezevim, that disgrace brat decided to run away from here. Sparta, Vali I will always stay ahead of you I promise that. Chapter 9, Relaxing. Sparta, Grandpa can I take the day off? Rezevim, go on you have earned it. Take rest for today. When will you get to human world? Sparta the day after tomorrow. Sparta then went to the garden and started to think that what he should do next. He had been thinking that he has the gob. In which there are many swords and lances should he get some training manual so master them. He still had two days before he goes to human world. Sparta, name Sparta Lucifer. Age 6 slash. Race human devil hybrid. Bloodline original Lucifer, 81%. Tier 2, level 70. Strength A. Defense C, 
SSS with skills. Agility A+. Wisdom S. Luck A. System points 1068. Abilities Vector Manipulation, LVL 99+. Devil Energy Manipulation, LVL 99+. Sharingan, Itaki Uchiha LVL 43. Obito Uchiha LVL 55 slash blindness 02%. Crash Magic, LVL 0. Sacred Gear Gate of Babylon, LVL 99 plus. Sparta, I already reached ultimate class and got 2% blind by using Sharingan. I guess fight with Rezevim really pushed me hard. I also don't have many points to buy high leveled skills. Iris show me what sword technique can I buy with my current points. You can buy standard sword technique for 700 SP. Sparta, buying. Done, integrating. Done. In the next moment his mind was filled with various sword stances and movements but he decided to try them later since he was really tired and his body was still aching. Sparta, no you can't now firstly you need to have both Itaki and Obito's Mangekyo Sharingan currently you have only awakened Obito's. Sparta, IT will cost you 100,000 SP for each Itaki and Obito's eyes. Means total 200,000 SP. Sparta. No you can awaken Rinnegan through system you don't need Senju of bloodline you just need to pay for respective prices. Sparta, he spent the remaining just laying around. Sitting here and there going inside when time to eat. Soon it was time to sleep he first went take a bath and he went to sleep that tomorrow he needed to practice his newly acquired sword skills. Sparta, good night brother. I hope when we meet next you can give me some challenge. Chapter 10, Sword Practice the next day he woke up on his his usual time. Then he freshened up and went to training ground to do his usual routine. After his usual routine he took a normal sword from the weapon stand and started practicing different sword stances and movements. After one hour of practice he became fluent in the moments like a muscle memory, meaning he already mastered it. Rezevim was watching him from the sides and didn't say anything. He knew that Sparta was strong and becoming more strong. In few years he will match him in strength. Then suddenly he remembered about his eyes and decided to ask when he completed his sword practice. After he completed his practice he saw Rezevim coming towards him. Rezevim, Sparta what were those eyes? And your phasing power is it related to your eyes? Sparta, I don't know grandpa I just wanted to win and suddenly my eyes started hurting and suddenly they were changed. I am not sure that those powers are from my eyes. Rezevim, listen brat tell me truthfully I know Lucifer's eyes are not like that. From where did you get those eyes? Sparta, I honestly don't know surely. You also know that I was born with these kind of eyes. Rezevim didn't believe him completely but he also knew that he was a kid. And the kid was born with these kind of eyes. At this moment he put it back of thoughts. He knew he will get more moments to ask about them and if they are his eyes power he will take them. But within Sparta's mind he was fully prepared with all his abilities to go into battle. He knew surely that if he used vector manipulation then Rezevim cannot defeat him. And he still had his space manipulation. If push came to shove he could run away anytime. Rezevim, tomorrow you are going to human world take this money, this is used in human world. Sparta, thank you grandpa, I will not spend mindlessly. Rezevim, I don't care how you spend that money just return in one piece. Sparta, don't worry grandpa. Then he went and washed himself up then got something to eat. Then he spent the remaining day lazing around and then took a bath ate his dinner and went to sleep. He was really excited tomorrow he was going to human world. Chapter 11, Human World Next day he woke up early in the morning since he was really excited about going to the human world. He then went to get freshen up after that he packed few clothes and commodities then went to meet his grandpa. His grandpa was already waiting with a lucid Lucy Phage in the garden. Rezevim, so you are ready to go? Elucid had already prepared a room in hotel for you, just go to hotel and say my name they will show you your room is that okay? Sparta, it's alright grandpa you have taken take of everything. Rezevim, now go there, Elucid had already prepared a magic circle for you. It will send you to Kua town. Firstly check in your room then go to look around. And if any insects bother you crush them. Sparta, okay grandpa and Elucid bye. Take care. With that Sparta went to the human world. Elucid, master should I follow him? Rezevim, not needed, he can take care of himself. If he cannot return from there in one piece then he was not worth of our time. When this conversation was going on Sparta was already in human world. Sparta, whoa. So this is Tokyo, looks amazing. 
I got four days I will firstly familiarize myself with town then I will complete the mission. He then asked some random person the way to hotel. After reaching the hotel he went to the receptionist. Receptionist, how can I help you? Sparta, I have room booked under the name of Rezevim Levon Lucifer. Receptionist, let me check for a moment. Sparta, okay I am waiting here. Receptionist, here is your key sir. This man will lead you to your room. Sparta. Okay thanks. Then he follows the man to his room and then enters it. He then keeps all his stuff in place then locks his room and goes out. He starts roaming through the city and gets hungry. He finds a restaurant and orders some food. After waiting for few minutes the waiter comes back with his food. Waiter, if you need something else please call me. Sparta, okay, thanks. After that the waiter went away and he starts to eat his food. Sparta, so good. After all these years I get to eat such nice food. Human world is awesome. After finishing his food he left the money on table and also gave a tip. Then he again asked some random people way to Heimjima Shrine. After walking for minutes he found the Heimjima Shrine. He went inside but he faced a huge problem he didn't know how to pray. Sparta, excuse me is there someone? Then someone answered him from inside. Coming. Chapter 12, Meeting Heimjimas Then a beautiful woman of about thirties came outside she had a long black hair tied in a single ponytail reaching her knees. She had yellow eyes and wore a Myko outfit. Sparta knew who she was but remembering her from memory and seeing in front of him were really different. She was Shuri Heimjima. Shuri, tell me young man what can do for you? Sparta, this is my first time coming to a shrine can you show me how to pray? Shuri, did you come here alone? Where are your parents? Okay I will show you how to pray. Sparta, I don't have parents I live with my grandfather nearby he didn't come. Shuri, oh. I am really sorry to hear that. This is how you pray. Then she shows Sparta how to pray then he prays himself. Shuri, what did you pray for? Oh I have been so rude I didn't introduce myself I am Shuri Heimjima. Sparta, I am also have been rude my name is Sparta. If I tell you it won't be fulfilled. Thank you for helping now. I should get going now. Shuri, won't you stay for a bit? I thought I would introduce you with my daughter, she is also your age. Sparta, I guess I could wait for a bit. Shuri, so tell me Sparta how old are you? Sparta, I am six years old. Who are you talking with mom? Then he saw a small girl younger than him coming towards them. She was a really small version of Shuri. Long black hair tied into a single ponytail, but purple eyes. Sparta already knew who she was. Shuri, Akeno come here meet Sparta he is just one year older than you. Why don't you become friends with him? Akeno, H hi. I am Akeno Heimjima it's nice to meet you. You can call me Akeno. Sparta, I am Sparta it's nice to meet you. After saying that I extended my hands and she shyly shook my hands. Shuri, Sparta why don't you come inside? Sparta, I am really sorry Miss Heimjima and Akeno I really have to go. Akeno, will you come again? Sparta, I will come tomorrow. Then he went out of Heimjima Shrine and again started roaming in the city while trying different kinds of foods and drinks. Then at night he again returns at hotel to stay the night. He goes to his room takes a bath and then goes to sleep. He have long day again tomorrow. Chapter 13, Attack on Heimjimas Next day he woke up his usual time he completed a few of his daily workout routines. Since everything can't be done indoors. Then he went out to get his breakfast. He went to the same restaurant because he liked their food very much. After eating he went towards the Heimjima shrine. He went inside and knocked on the door. Soon footsteps can be heard from inside coming towards the door. Soon someone opens the door. Shuri, so you came, Akeno was really sad she doesn't have many friends. Sparta, good morning Miss Heimjima. How have you been? Shuri, aren't you a gentleman? I am fine. Go meet Akeno her mood is really off. Sparta, where is she? Shuri, she is backyard playing. I went towards their backyard and found her playing with some dolls. Hearing footsteps she looked towards me. As soon as she saw me her face started glittering. She left her dolls there and came running to me. Akeno, you really came. I don't have any friends to play with. Will you be my friend? Sparta, if I wasn't your friend I wouldn't have come. 
Then Akeno started dragging him towards where she was playing before. At first she was scolding Sparta for not knowing how to play. After some time she started teaching him how to play. When she got irritated she would pout which was really cute. Sometimes he would knowingly irritated her to see her cute pouting face. Shuri was watching them from aside with a smile on her face. After few hours playing he got up to leave. He then said his regards to Akeno and Shuri and went out of Heimjima Shrine and started yesterday's routine different foods and drinks. Today he also went to arcade, he played a few games then returned to his hotel. The next day he woke up woke and thought tomorrow there will be attack on Heimjima Shrine. Then he exactly followed his yesterday's routine. He did some workout, went out had breakfast from same restaurant. Then he went to Heimjima Shrine played with Akeno or teased her actually then again give them their regards and moved on to his food escaped and end his day as he did yesterday. Next morning he woke up and got freshen up and went out to get breakfast. After his breakfast he went directly to Heimjima Shrine but he didn't enter. He kept observing their house from distance. After a hour he noticed about 20 humans are heading towards the house when they came near he exactly knew the number of them. There were 22 humans standing near Heimjima Shrine. They were all carrying some kind of weapons. Soon they broke into house after confirming that only mother and daughter were in the house. Within the house. Shuri was covering Akeno by her body. She knew that all attackers were from Heimjima clan. She knew her situation was really dire. Shuri, just let my daughter go, she haven't done anything to you. I married him, punish me, or kill me just let my daughter go. Akeno, mom I am really scared. Who are these people? Where is father? Shuri, don't worry dear I won't let anything happen to you. Assassins, she is the daughter of a filthy fallen, being her daughter is crime in itself. Don't worry we will first kill your daughter in front of you, then only I will kill you. After saying that he was about to attack then suddenly a massive pressure fell on them and they heard someone's cold voice from behind them. I dare you to even lay a finger on them. Chapter 14, Weakness all of the assassins looked behind them but didn't find anyone when they turned their head towards the mother-daughter duo they found a small kid standing between them and mother-daughter duo. They were all shocked the assassins saw a kid with silver hair and red eyes rotating standing in front of them. Shuri and Akeno were also shocked but they knew who that kid was. Shuri, what are you doing here please run away from here. Assassins, kid what do you think you are doing? Doesn't matter we will also kill you. The kid turned towards Shuri and Akeno and put them under a simple genjutsu to make them leave the compound and go towards the forest where they will meet Rias. Seeing them leaving the assassins tried to attack them but kid took out a sword from somewhere and blocked them. The swords which he was not able to block by his sword were deflected by vector manipulation. All the assassins were shocked and they were raging. Then there were several golden ripples in space and lot of weapons came out of them and pointed swords and lances towards all the assassins. They were again shocked but the kid launched those weapons and soon all the assassins were dead except the leader. His back was filled with cold sweat, he knew for sure that he will die today. Then he noticed the kid's eye rotating again and he lost the ability to move his body. The kid put him in a genjutsu. Of course the kid was Sparta. Sparta, who gave you the information about their location? Who told you that they would be alone? Leader, I don't know his name but he was a fallen angel with ten wings. Sparta. Thank you for the information now you can die. He says that and swings his sword and cuts off his head. Then he took out a fire torch from Gob and light the house in fire. Then he wait for a bit and used his space ability to escape towards some alley. He then directly fell to his knees and tried to catch his breath again. He took out a sense of bean from inventory and ate it. Sparta, even I have mastered the Gob and VM, vector manipulation. I will use VM from now on for this, my body cannot bear the toll. Even he had mastered both Gob and VM his body was unable to bear the burden. He also had a huge amount of devil energy which was also adding the burden and using Sharingan to use Genjutsu wasn't also helpful in this matter. He was still a six-year-old kid. His body was unable to bear the burden of using those powers and breaking from inside. He was healed instantly but he was still getting tired and even if physical injuries are being healed his mind was having the burden which can't be healed by instant regeneration. After few minutes he was able calm his mind completely then he started walking towards the hotel to get some rest it was a really tiring day for him. As soon as he reached the hotel he went to take a bath. Sparta, he then got out of his bath and went towards his bed and directly fell asleep he even forgot to collect his awards for the mission. Chapter 15, Akeno's Decision POV, Akeno Akeno, Mom I am really scared. Who are these people? Where is father? Shuri 
Don't worry dear I won't let anything happen to you. Assassins, she is the daughter of a filthy fallen, being her daughter is crime in itself. Don't worry we will first kill your daughter in front of you, then only I will kill you. Akino, where is father now? They came to kill me because I am his daughter? They will also kill mother for marrying him? Father please come now or I will never forgive you. After saying that he was about to attack then suddenly a massive pressure fell on them and they heard someone cold voice from behind them. I dare you to even lay a finger on them. Akino, what is Sparta doing here? Did he came to save us? I was about to speak to him but he suddenly came between us and the bad people. He turned towards us he was smiling but what were those eyes they were rotating. What is happening I cannot control my body, seeing my mother's expression she was also facing the same problem. We already started leaving the compound but I don't want to leave him alone. I cannot stop we were reaching the forest we soon entered the forest and keep going deep inside. I then saw two silhouettes in front of us, getting closer it was clear, a woman wearing maid outfit and silver hair was standing there with a small girl of my age. She had red crimson hair and had blue green eyes. The maid turned towards us. Who are you? Shuri, we need help. We were attacked. I was about to ask them the same thing but my mother beat me to it. Then the small girl turned towards me and asked. Hello my name is Rhea Scremery. Will you become my queen? Akeno, my friend is left behind please help him I am ready to become your queen or whatever. I didn't know what she meant by me becoming her queen but if she helps me save him. I don't care if I have to become her queen. Shuri, do you even know what she meant by that? Akeno, I don't care he came to save us and we left him behind. I will do everything I can. My name is Graffi Yalusi Fage do you mind us showing which was your home is? My mother didn't say anything and started to show them the way. I guess she also wanted to save him. We soon reached our house or what was left of it. I started crying the house had burnt down completely and we don't know if he survived or not. The lady named Graffi Ya started to check if there were any survivors or not. I was still holding a little bit of hope but it also shattered when she shook her head in denial. Both me and my mother were crying. Rias was also sad seeing us cry. I was still crying I looked towards Rias. Akeno, what did you meant by becoming your queen? Rias, I am a devil. I am a high class devil from House of Gremory of the 72 Pillars of the Underworld. We have peerage system representing chess pieces. I want you to become my queen? Akeno, if I agree to become your queen you need to protect my mother. Shuri, Akeno what are you saying? Are you willing to become a devil? Akeno, all this time I was hoping for father to return but when we were attacked where was he? I don't want to be powerless anymore. My mother seemed to be thinking something then she sighed and nodded her head. Looks like Sparta's death has also affected her. Akeno, make me your queen but promise to protect my mother. POV, narrator. Then Rias took out her queen piece and started the ceremony. After making Akeno her queen they all left to Underworld. Before going Akeno looked towards their burned house and mumbled thank you. Chapter 16, 3 years time skip. Next morning Sparta woke up on his usual time and he opened his system to collect the rewards. Sparta, mission completed save Shuri and Akeno Haim Jima. Rewards obtained barrier breaker, 30,000 SP. Sparta, integrating. Done. Then Sparta got up from bed and went to get freshen up after that he had breakfast and created a magic circle to go to Rezevim's castle. He packed up all his stuff and then stepped into the circle and teleported. Rezevim, so you came back how was your trip? Sparta, it was really nice grandpa. I really enjoyed the food most. Rezevim, okay rest for a bit and then start training again. Then Rezevim went sent somewhere and Sparta went to his room to his room to keep all his stuff after that he again started training. He knew he needed to train his body so that he can lift the burden of his powers on his body. After three years. Now Sparta was already nine years old. He grew a lot in all these three years. He was now 4'11". After seeing him nobody will think that he is nine years old he looks much older. All these years Sparta didn't stop training for once since he need to make his body stronger for his powers. Every morning he trained and then went out to hunt beasts. A lot have happened in these three years. He still haven't mastered crush magic. Two days after his seventh birthday there was an incident which made Rezevim and Sparta distant. Rezevim, Sparta you have grown a lot. I think time has come for you to learn about personality of devils or how devils should be. Sparta, I don't understand grandpa what do you mean? Rezevim, actually devils should be evil, wicked, brutal, 
bad, scum, wrong, brutes, as well as vicious, and it is the role of a devil to kill every single person they don't like. Do you understand what I said? Sparta, honestly I don't care about all that I just know that everything is meaningless in front of absolute strength. Rezevim, what did you say? You are a devil you have to be all that if you want to be a devil. Sparta, I am proud of what I am. I don't care for all that. Then Rezevim tried to his Sparta and his hand just phased through him. Rezevim was really enraged he was thinking he raised this brat now he won't listen to him. He thought that he would get a follower but that didn't work. What was the result of being so nice to him and raising him feeding and after that this was the result. In rage he again tried to hit him but to no avail his hand would phase through him. Sparta, no matter how much you try you won't be able to hit me. Since I always respected you I didn't retaliate like Vala did. Rezevim, brat you have the audacity to go against me I will kill you. Sparta just walked away and Rezevim kept gritting his teeth. In reality Rezevim was very prideful and Sparta just spat on his pride he won't forgive him. But after few minutes Rezevim calmed himself thinking that Sparta's power are unique if he is able to keep him in his castle he will help him out when needed. After that day Rezevim never tried to be nice to him. He returned to his original personality. Sparta already knew that Rezevim wanted to use him so he was nice to him. He saw how Rezevim treated his brother. After this incident Sparta went to library and started reading about sacred gears. He wanted to make a power like Rezevim's sacred gear canceller but he wanted his power to blood related which his kids will be able to inherit. But two years passed he still was not successful. Chapter 17, Sisters Next morning Sparta woke up and was continuing the daily routine when suddenly he got a notification from the system. Mission, Save the Sisters Details, Kill the scientists and the devil who is conducting the experiments and break out of the facility with the sisters. Rewards, Curse Breaker, 50,000 SP Penalty all system points will be taken. Time limit, one month. Sparta, Sparta I can assure you that I am real you don't have any mental problems. Sparta, straight face, then Sparta started reminiscing about the past three years. He had worked really hard and now he can use all of his powers for continuous ten minutes after that only his body will start to feel the burden of power and started breaking. So he can use his full power for total fifteen minutes before getting exhausted. Then he decided have did enough for today and decided to take a break. In these three years he didn't use any bloodline purifying pill because he didn't wanted to increase his strength when his body couldn't even handle his current power. Next day he woke up completed his daily routine then he went out to search for the research facility. He only knew that it would be Nabrius territory. He got out of castle and went towards Nabrius territory. Before entering their territory he put a space barrier around him so that no one will be able to see or sense him. He started roaming their territory but didn't find anything. Later that day he came back to castle without any success. He continued this routine for straight 15 days but still didn't find anything. On 16th day he was really frustrated and went to sit on hill to look everywhere from there. He sat on the hill but suddenly he felt something that the surface of the hill was really smooth. He rubbed the surface again and found that it felt like concrete. He was sure that it wasn't real concrete so he activated his MS and saw right through the illusion he saw there was mansion in the center. His quickly used Kamui and entered the barrier. He had barrier breaker he could have easily broke the barrier but if he used that people inside will be notified. He quickly made his way inside the mansion. The mansion was a regular looking one but he knew they had an underground family he quickly started searching and found a bookshelf which had marks of opening like a door on the ground. He found a book which had no dust on it and the remaining were covered dust. He pulled the book out and the bookshelf opened like a door he quickly went inside. He found a pathway that led to a room when he went inside the room he almost puked suddenly his eyes started bleeding and felt tremendous pain in his eyes. He already knew what it was, he awakened the Mangekyo of Itaki Uchiha. Then he didn't wait for long and started searching for the sisters. Soon he found it a room where four middle class devils were playing cards. There were just cannon fodder in front of him. He entered the room and disabled his space barrier. The devils noticed him immediately. MOB1, who are you kid? How did you get in here? MOB2, doesn't matter we will just kill him or give him to the scientists to conduct experiment. Sparta, Tsukuyomi. Where are the Nikomata sisters? MOB1, master took the elder one to conduct experiment and the younger one is in the next room. Sparta, how many guards are near the young one? Where are the experiments conducted? MOB3, only two guards. There is another underground floor all the experiments are conducted there. Sparta, thank you. 
Now all of you cut your own throat. All four of them then cut their own throat and died. Sparta didn't wait for them as he already went towards the next room. He saw there were only two guards and Chiron was seating in the middle. There were tears in her eyes she was crying. She had white hair and golden eyes like cat. One was low class and other was middle class. So he took a sword from Gob and entered the room. After entering he immediately cut off the middle class devil's head and launched a sword towards the low class devil. He was surprised and unable to react like the middle class and died. He saw that Chiron became scared of him but wiped away her tears. Chiron, are you a hero? Did you came to save us? Sparta, no I am not a hero but I will save you. And what did you meant by us? Chiron, yes me and my sister are only left, they took her somewhere. Can you please tell me your name? I am Chiron. Sparta, you can call me Gilgamesh. Come follow me we will find your sister. A slash N, I was unable to stop myself. Then they both got out of the room and Chiron was walking behind Sparta. Soon they found a staircase which lead them downwards. Sparta placed a space barrier around of them so that nobody can see or sense them. He quickly noticed that there are six low class devil three middle class two high class and one ultimate class devil. He also found Kurika laying on an operation table. Sparta then kicked the door and entered with continuously launching weapons from Gob. Only the ultimate class devil was able to block them but he was still injured. He signaled Chiron to help Kukura and then turned towards the devil. Who are you? Do you know who I am? I am the head of Nabarius clan. Sparta, hello my name is Gilgamesh and I am really happy to tell you that you will die here mongrel. Amaterasu. The chest of the devil immediately started screaming and tried to put off the fire but all of that nothing to avail. Soon he died but his body kept burning. After few moments not even ash was remaining. He looked towards Kurika then she was scared that he killed them all like insects. She knew the person standing in front of her was insanely strong. Even she had to struggle a lot to kill her master. Chiron, thank you Gilgamesh Ani Isama. Sparta, I told you I will save you. But we need to get out of here. Kurika, sorry for the hostility. I am Kurika. Thank you for saving us. Soon they got out of facility Kurika was about to take Chiron with her. Sparta, you know you will be treated like stray devils and you take your sister with you she will be treated same. Kurika, so what should I do, leave her? Sparta, do you have anything to prove your innocence? Kurika, I have this journal. Sparta, give it to your sister. I can take your sister to the sister of Sertsk Lucifer. I can guarantee she will be safe with her and when the time will be right she will use the journal to save your sister. Chiron, but I don't want to leave my sister. Kurika, please Chiron I can't take you with me take this journal with you. Chiron started crying that she didn't want to leave her sister. Then suddenly Kurika chopped on the back of her neck and made her unconscious. Kurika then looked towards Sparta. Kurika, promise me she will be safe. Otherwise I will find you then kill you if that is the last thing I do. Sparta, I promise. Then Sparta picked up Chiron and the journal and told Kurika to stay safe and went away. Kurika also took off in the opposite direction. Soon Sparta entered the Gremory territory and moved towards Gremory Castle. Soon he located Rias and Akeno in back of garden but before appearing in front of them he took out a mask from Gob and wore it. Then he suddenly appeared in front of them. They both got scared and fired their magic. The magic just bounced to some random direction before touching him. Which sacred them more. They were about to attack again then they noticed him carrying a small girl and he raised his freehas as a sign of surrender. Sparta, please don't attack. I have no ill intention against you. This girl has nowhere to go, she is a Nicomata. She was held captive while her sister was being experimented on this journal is the proof of that. She didn't have any other place to go so I brought her to you. Rias, why bring her to us? How do you know about me? Sparta. I know how the Gremaries treat their servant that's why I broke it her to you. Rias, who are you? Sparta, you can call me Gilgamesh. Chapter 18, A Certain Fallen Sparta didn't wait for their reply he just turned around and left them. He that went to Rezevim's castle then took a bath and went to sleep. He again forgot to collect the mission rewards and went to sleep. Next day he woke up then he asked his system to give him rewards. Sparta, mission completed save the sisters. Rewards obtained Curse Canceller, 50,000 SP. Sparta, integrating. Done. Sparta, 
I have already awakened both the Mangekyo Sharingan but I don't have enough points to upgrade them to M's. I need to work more hard. He got up from bed and then went to freshen up. After that he went to do his usual workout. After his workout he went to study about the sacred gears. He didn't made any progress in that matter. Like this days kept passing, it became weeks, then it became months and finally a year. Time flew by. But he still didn't know what to do and what he was missing. Suddenly a notification came into his mind. Mission find the missing part. Details complete your study about sacred gears. Rewards 50,000 SP. Penalty never be able to complete your ability. Time limit one year. Sparta, I have already read every book related to sacred gears in this library. Only one person can help me. I guess I will be meeting my brother. My time to run away has also come. I can learn nothing more from Rezevim. He then went to his room and started packing. He packed a few clothes and some general commodities and put the bat inside Gob. He knew that he had to go to Kyuha town. He snapped his fingers and a garganta opened he casually walked inside. At that moment at outskirts of Kyuha town a garganta opened a kid of about 10 years old appeared he had silver hair and red eyes. He was none other than Sparta. He was searching for a certain person he knew he was a huge pervert and a big gaming geek. Sparta decided that he will check all the arcades first and gaming conventions or tournaments. He started roaming the town. But after looking at few arcades he found that there was a tournament going on. Now he was sure that he will find him there. He quickly went towards the venue. After he reached the venue he went inside and started looking around and soon found the person he was looking for. He was currently fighting against his opponent in semi-finals. Sparta patiently waited for him to complete his match so that he could talk with him. That man won in the semi-finals and waited to meet the other finalist. Soon he started his fight with the other finalist. After quite a struggle he was able to beat his opponent. Then he collected his trophy and prize money and started to leave the venue. Sparta quietly started following him. Sparta was following that man but he didn't use his space barrier to hide from him. He man was walking normally but suddenly be bolted towards a dark alley. Sparta that moment he knew that the man has found out that he was following him. Sparta activated Sharingan and ran after him. As soon as turned in alley he saw a hand coming towards his neck in chopping posture. But the hand passed right through him and he turned around him. He was able to see him from corner of his eye. Sparta was now noticing his every move. That man was looking as his own hand. The man had black hair with golden bangs on the front and had a goatee. That man was Governor General of Fallen Angels Azazel. Azazel, so you are brother of Vali. Sparta, I guess so you know my brother. Azazel, what do you want with him? Sparta, maybe just check how he is doing. But I came to meet me. Azazel, me? What do you want with me? Sparta, nothing much I just want to exchange information. Azazel, what kind of information? Sparta, I guess you are curious about my power and I am interested in your sacred gear research. By the way my name is Sparta Lucifer. Azazel, that I am curious, I am also interested in your sacred gear. I have never heard of that kind of power and sacred gear. And I am Azazel leader of fallen angels. Sparta extend his hand towards Azazel. Sparta, I guess so we have a deal? Azazel shakes his hand. Sparta, so you have a place we can talk in details? Azazel, I do have, let me show the way. Then they both started walking and exited the alleys. Chapter 19, Reunion Soon Azazel took him to a simple looking house. Sparta, are you sure that we aren't breaking into someone else's house? Azazel, straight face, brat who do you think I am? Sparta, the most laid back fallen. Azazel, I am not laid back I am on my energy saving mode. Sparta, yeah yeah whatever. While this conversation was going on Azazel opened the door and they already went inside. Azazel gestured Sparta to take a seat. Sparta sat down and Azazel went inside and then came with a drink and some snacks. Azazel also took a seat. Azazel, so tell me what do you want to know? Sparta, I want to know each sacred gear works. What makes them tick? How each mechanisms work? Azazel, you know you are asking a lot. How do I know that you were not sent here by Rezevim? Last time I heard you were quite close to him. Sparta, you see maybe we were close before but mine and his ideals don't match at all. He thinks that devils should be evil, wicked, brutal, bad, scum, wrong, brutes, as well as vicious, 
and it is the role of a devil to kill every single person they don't like. Azazel, so what your ideal is? Sparta, mine is quite simple. If you have absolute strength then everything else is meaningless. If you have absolute strength then you can be whoever you want. Azazel, that's quite the ideal you have there. Do you think you think you have absolute strength? Sparta, I don't have now but in future I will surely have it. Azazel, okay kid mind me showing your sacred gear? Sparta, of course I don't mind, here take a look. In Kidju. Azazel, I have never seen this sacred gear and it is definitely radiating some kind of power which I am not familiar with, maybe it is some kind of mutated sacred gear. Amazing. Then Azazel gets up and goes inside then he bought out a catalogue like huge book which had Roman number I written on it and gave to Sparta. Azazel, this book is the first volume of Sacred Gears. It has every last details of Sacred Gears mentioned in the book. Then Sparta started reading the book. His full concentration was in the book. Then he suddenly looks towards Azazel. Sparta, how has my brother been in these four years? Azazel, he still has some problems. But when I first saw him his mind was really chaotic. POV, Volley. Volley, damn Azazel, he is really laid back. He just keeps playing games and reading those dirty magazines and always sends me to do his job. I am going home after completing a job of clearing the Rouge Fallen Angels. He should keep tabs on all his subordinates. A lot have happened in all these years. I have changed a lot. I guess Azazel pulled me out of the dark pit. I really owe him a lot. I wonder how my brother is doing. It's already been four years. Flashback four years ago. It is our sixth birthday I know what will happen today. I quickly need to get out of here. I cannot take it anymore. I will ask my brother today to run away with me. I soon reached the courtyard where Rezevim was waiting for us. He asked us what we wanted on our birthdays. I asked him to drop dead he told me I am free to try. My brother asked him if he could go to human world. Rezevim told him if he could hit him once he will let him go. I was worried for my brother. I knew how harshly Rezevim fought so I was worried it was natural. But I was really shocked to see how strong my brother was. I never saw Rezevim mistreating Sparta and I know now, he is so much stronger than me. Even if Rezevim was holding back but to still fight with him like that I didn't knew it was possible. I was awed by his power and also at the same time I was cursing myself for being weak. My brother got hit for second time and coughed out some blood then suddenly his eyes started to bleed and his eyes started rotating and took a fan-like shape. Looking at those eyes felt like it could see through my soul. Then he told Rezevim to get ready for round two and attacked him. I could not believe what happened next Rezevim's hand passed right through him. Rezevim was also shocked then battle became more intense Rezevim became more serious. But finally my brother was able to land a hit so he won. Even after that my brother passed out he still won. I cannot believe my own eyes I was raging from the inside for my own weakness. Then Rezevim asked me to take my brother to his room. I complied I picked my brother up and carried him to his room and laid him on his bed. I wish you can forgive me I will leave this castle today. I need to grow strong so that I can stand by your side. Just keep watching I will catch up to you in no time. Present time. Then I was running away for how long I don't even know. I was passed out in cave and then I was found by Azazel. At first I was scared but he took care of me, gave me food, and gave me home. I really owe him a lot. Thinking all this I reach Azazel's home. I opened the door and saw another pair of shoes but it was about my shoe size. I went inside and saw a kid of my age with silver hair like me he seemed kind of familiar. He turned towards me and I immediately recognized him. He is my brother. Sparta, it's been long how have you been? Chapter 20, Catching Up Vali was really shocked to see his brother here now in Azazel's house. His mind was in chaos a lot of thoughts came to his mind. Vali. Sparta, are you not going to ask that how I have been? I have been really hurt. Vali, no I was just shocked seeing you here. I have been fine. Azazel has been taking care of me. Did you ran away or Rezevim sent you to bring me back? Sparta, that's nice to hear. It can be either of them. I really want to found out how strong have you became. Vali, I also want to find that out myself. Azazel, all right brats hold your horses. Nobody is fighting anyone now. Are all the Lucifer's battle maniacs like you? It is already night I will arrange a place for both of you tomorrow. Sparta do you have a place to stay? Sparta, okay that will do. And I don't have a place to stay. 
Volley, it works for me. Azazel, okay there is a guest room at the back you can crash there. After that they have their dinner and everyone went to their room to sleep. Next day Sparta woke up early he was really excited to fight his brother. He quickly got up from bed and went to get freshen up. Then he went to backyard to complete his daily routine workout. After he completed his workout he saw both Azazel and Vala were up. Then they had breakfast and then Azazel took them to a barren land and created a barrier. Azazel, now you maniacs can let loose. Nobody will bother us here. Vali, are you ready to lose? Sparta, are you speaking for yourself? Vala then directly went into his balance breaker and flew towards Sparta but Sparta has already activated MS so Vala's fist phased right through Sparta's head. Sparta then counters him with Inkiju. The chains start the chase Vala and Vala becomes busy avoiding the chains. Taking advantage of this moment Sparta creates several spheres made of devil energy and throws them at Vali. Vala who was busy avoiding the chains suddenly get hit by many spheres and an explosion takes place. When the dust settles down Vala can still be seen in his scale mail, but it was broken in many parts and he was also seen to be bleeding. This time Sparta went for the attack with spheres of demonic energy in his hands. Vala dodges them and goes to his blind spot and again tries to punch him but still no avail it passes right through him. Sparta again uses Inkiju to distract him he becomes busy again trying to dodge all those chains. Then he again hits Vala with his demonic energy. The spheres explode and when the smoke clears Vala can be seen in a crater without his scale mail. His figure was bloodied and had burn marks somewhere. Sparta and Azazel immediately run towards him. Sparta takes out a sense of beans and puts it in Vala's mouths. He chews and swallows it. Immediately his body recovers all his stamina and all his wounds are closed. He sits up and keep looking down and punches the ground. Vali, why can't I beat you at there that much difference between us? Sparta, no it is not correct. You should also practicing your devil energy so you can attack using them. Just see that you can have a lot of versatility. You should not completely depend on your sacred gear. Azazel, what was that thing was brat? Sparta, I call it sense of beans they can heal a pacen and return their stamina. Azazel, where did you get them? This could be groundbreaking. How many do you have? Sparta, I was wandering in the forest and got hungry I saw these beans, from smell I knew they were not poisonous. I ate one and voila I have my stamina back. I don't have many but I can give one to you so you research about it. At first Azazel was getting sadder and sadder but when he told that he will give one to him his mood became cheerful. Then Sparta again put his hand in pocket and took out a sense of bean gave it to Azazel. After that they went all back to home. Sparta stayed with them and continued to study about sacred gears and Azazel would study his sacred gear and phasing ability. Both Azazel and Vala had zero cooking skills. No matter what they cooked it always became poison. Sparta didn't know how he knew cooking but he had to take that mantle so that he won't be freeloader. Sparta thought that this skill might be from his past life and left it at that. He was not arrogant about his cooking but he was quite good. Like that one month has passed. One day he was alone at home suddenly he felt some disturbances in energy in his surroundings so he went to check and found that several exorcists were chasing a single exorcist. He knew who they were and decided to follow them, he activated his space barrier and followed them. Soon the solo exorcist was surrounded and the leader of exorcist came forward and said. Toji, sorry my friend but this the end of the road, please surrender or else we will have to kill you. Masumai, sorry my friend I will not surrender but if you want to take me you have to kill me. Toji, you leave me no option, now please die in the name of God. Suddenly an unknown pressure and voice interrupted them. Are you sure of that? Chapter 21, King's Peace When Toji and Masumai was having their conversation Sparta was really thinking hard that if he should save him or not. But suddenly he thought that maybe later he can gain a favor from Dihauser Belial for saving Claria Belial. In story he knew that Dihauser was really close to Claria. And he was already saving everyone there will be no point if he doesn't save two more person and he can gain a serious favor from saving them so it was a win-win situation. Then he saw that Masumai was about to be killed and interfered. Sparta, are you sure of that? All exorcists were shocked a kid suddenly appear in front of them and interfered their work of God. Sparta knew he can't kill Toji so decided to use Genjutsu. Then he activated his Sharingan and cast a simple Genjutsu making them think that they killed Misumai and all of them started leaving with smiling faces except Toji because he thought that he killed his friend. Then Sparta turned towards Misumai. Sparta, care to tell why there were so many exorcists trying to kill you? Misumai, what you did to them? Why all of them left like that? Sparta, 
I made them see an illusion that made them think that they killed you so they left. Now I think I asked you a question. Masumai, I fell in love with someone that is the reason. Sparta, I don't remember that ever being a reason. You must have fallen with love with wrong person. Masumai, me being a exorcist shouldn't have fallen in love with a devil. Sparta, if you're being hunted then she should be also. Take me to her if you want to save her. Masumai, you are kid please don't involve yourself in this. And what do you even gain by saving us? Sparta, please take me to her I really want to fight strong opponents. I just want to save you out of my goodwill. Sparta said all that with a smile on his face and his bloodlust started oozing out and Masumai got scared by it. He didn't answer just nodded and started to take him to the cafe Claria owned. When they reached the cafe they saw signs of battle everything was broken there. Masumai seeing this got really depressed. Sparta, don't lose hope she might still be alive. I can sense a barrier straight up that way. Both of them started moving in that direction in the path they found three bodies. One woman and two men. Seeing the bodies Masumai face became more grim. Sparta, do you know them? Masumai, yes those two were pawns of Claria the other one I don't know. Sparta, so he must be one of the attackers. Now let's move we can't afford to waste any time. They again started moving and soon reached the barrier and when they saw inside they found that only Claria was standing against 25 devils and she was bloodied. Sparta took five Senzubina handed them to Masumai. Sparta, as soon as I break the barrier run towards Claria and give her one of the beans it will heal her. And see if someone is alive give one to each. I have only five, if any of them remains return it to me. Barrier Breaker Inside the barrier they were about to attack Claria altogether to kill her but suddenly their barrier broke and heard a new voice from behind them. Sparta, well well well. What do we have here? Twenty-five men attacking an injured lady that is not nice. Since Sparta took all the attacker's attention Masumai quickly moved towards Claria and gave her a sense of bean. She ate it and got immediately healed. And she jumped into Masumai's embrace and started crying. Masumai, Claria is any of your peerage alive? Claria. They killed them they killed them all. Somehow only I survived till now. I would be dead too if you didn't came. And you brought a kid here? Masumai, he is the one who saved me from exorcists. He said he wanted to fight. With Sparta every attacker was looking at him laughing. But Sparta was checking his enemies there was one ultimate class, six high class, ten mid class and eight low class devils. Mob leader, kid you found the wrong place to play hero. Someone please kill him so we can do our job. Two low-class devils attacked him magic and as soon the magic touched him the spells returned to their casters with thrice the speed and hit both of them on head. Result they instantly died because they have nothing left above their neck. Soon their bodies hit the floor shaking and oozing out blood. All the attackers and even the lovers were shocked seeing that. Sparta, that was so rude. Now all of you can die. He then activated his gob and about 50 golden ripples appeared in the air. There were weapons pointing out of them and then he launched them at all the attackers except the ultimate class devils. Soon weapons started raining down and they didn't know what to do. The whole field got covered by dust, when the dust settled only the ultimate class devil was standing. He was shaking in fear. Masumai and Claria were standing at some distance, both of them were also scared of him. Sparta, see if I wanted I could have killed you instantly. But where would be fun in that? They behaved with me rudely. So I killed the mongrels like a mongrel should die. Claria was thinking that these devils killed her family slash peerage and she could not do anything to stop them and this kid just slaughtered them like insects. Mob leader, please let me go. I was hired by her clan to kill her. Otherwise I wouldn't have bothered. Sparta, what? You are an ultimate class devil, I thought you were a warrior so I left you. Since you don't want to fight, you can also die mongrel. Amaterasu. The leader started screaming on top of his lungs. He tried to put out the fire but to his dismay the fire kept spreading and soon he died screaming. He then walked towards Claria and Masosumi. Sparta, are both of you okay? So want to tell me why they were sent to kill you? Claria, thank you for saving us. Since I fell in love with an exorcist they wanted to kill me. Sparta, do you think I am stupid they were an extermination squad? They won't use force so big just to kill for the reason that you fell in love with an exorcist. Claria, so you are intelligent too. Okay I will tell you. Do you know about raiding games and peerage? Sparta didn't say anything just nodded his head. Claria, 
then in peerage there are only 15 pieces the king piece is not present since it was banned by the current devil society. The king piece boosts a devil's power by 10 to 100 times which is not pair. But some devils are still using these king pieces behind everyone's back to win in raiding games. Even some council members also support them. I came to know about to truth so they wanted to kill me and my whole peerage. After listening to this Sparta took out two pendants from Gob. Sparta, this is quite a big scandal so they obviously try to cover it up. Here take these pendants and always keep them with you. This pendants will hide your power from anybody and nobody will be able to recognize you as long as you wear them. Masumai, why are you doing all of this for us? Sparta, I already told you the reason. Now go this place is not safe for any of you. Claria, I don't know if I ever will be able to repay you. Sparta, you don't need to, stay safe wherever you go. Then Sparta left them and started walking back to Azazel's house. Chapter 22, Marry Me When Sparta reached Azazel's home, he went to take a bath. Then he began to prepare dinner for all of them. After few hours Azazel and Vala came back home. Sparta, where the hell were you two? Azazel, some fight took place near here. And they were so dumb that they didn't cleared up the bodies, and current ruler of Kuah town also died. So you can say it was a real mess. Vali, I don't care anymore I am going to take a bath. Sparta was really embarrassed after listening to Azazel's rant. After that they had dinner and went to their respective rooms and went to sleep. Like that time flew by. Time skipped two years. In these two years three major things happened. Firstly Sparta completed the mission to study about sacred gears. And then Sparta finally was able to make his body strong enough to hold the ultimate class power he had. Thirdly Sparta caught Vala looking at Azazel's magazine Butt Paradise, after that Sparta named him Butt Dragon much to Albion's dismay. When heard it he was rolling on the floor trying to laugh his laugh. At that moment Vala was only trying to find a hole to hide himself into. Azazel also found out that Ankija could seal any kind of divinity. At first he couldn't believe himself, but he was not able to find anything about his phasing ability. He knew that it was related to his eyes but nothing more than that. Except all these everything was pretty normal. They all continued to follow their everyday same routine. Sparta came back into home after completing his daily workout and saw Azazel getting ready to leave. Sparta, where are you going in the morning? Azazel, something important came up in Grigori I need to attend immediately. Sparta didn't say anything just nodded his head. Then Azazel made a magic circle and stepped into that. Then Sparta went to take a bath and after returning he started to prepare breakfast. Sparta heard someone coming down the stairs. Sparta, what's up but dragon? How was your sleep? Vali, please don't call me that. Albion cries daily. I think he will soon need a therapy. Where is Azazel? Sparta, he told something came up in Grigori. Vala didn't say anything and just nodded his head. After having breakfast they sparred a little. Then they spend the remaining day lazing around. Azazel returned in the evening. Azazel, Sparta, Vala where are you? Come here I need to talk about something. Then Vala and Sparta came towards him. Azazel, apparently there will be meeting between Shinto faction and Fallen faction in this week. I can take two guards with me. I want the two of you to accompany me. Sparta, I guess I will pass. Vali, me too. Azazel, Okay Valya if you don't go I will tell everyone about your little nickname but dragon. And Sparta there will be no more snacks for you. Valya, when do we leave? Sparta, that was a cheap shot. I will also go. Azazel, they will release the time and venue on later notice. Just be ready. Then on next day they receive the notice telling them the meeting will be held in hotel from 10 a.m. on Friday, which was day after tomorrow. They spent their next day lazing around. On Friday they woke up early and got ready to leave for venue. After reaching the venue they were shown a designated room and waited for the Shinto representatives to come. After waiting for few minutes the Shinto representatives arrived. They looked towards the door they saw two men entering the room wearing Shinto faction's army uniform. Behind them a woman entered she had deep black hair and golden eyes like the sun. She was wearing a Maiko outfit which make her look more beautiful. The woman looked like she was in her twenties. Seeing her something happened within Sparta. He didn't say anything and started moving towards her. Her guards were ready to attack him. He stopped in front of her and got down to one of his knees and held her hand and kissed on it. Then Sparta said something which blew away everyone's mind. Sparta, will you marry me? Amaterasu, wwh what? 
her face became completely red. Azazel, Vali, and the guard's eyes were about to pop out of their sockets. But then one of the guard calmed himself down. Guard1, do you even know who you are speaking to? Sparta, of course I know. I am speaking to this beautiful lady in front of me. Amaterasu, wh who me be bo beautiful. Sparta, of course you are. Amaterasu was stuttering with a red face which Sparta found really cute. Amaterasu has never been proposed. She has been called beautiful by many but nobody did it like this. Even though Sparta was 12 years old he was 5 too high and his silver hair and red eyes made him more handsome. Amaterasu found him really handsome so being complimented by someone handsome really struck her heart. Azazel already had his jaw on the floor and Vali was mumbling something. Vali, I am deaf. I am deaf. I am deaf. Vala somehow collected himself and hit Sparta behind his head and grabbed him and started dragging him back. After seeing this Azazel also collected himself. But Amaterasu still had a red face. Azazel, please forgive my subordinate he is not well trained. The guards were about to bash out but Amaterasu interfered. Amaterasu, it's okay. Then the meeting began as why was Azazel was staying in Japan and what were his opinion on recent fallen activity in Japan. The meeting continued and Azazel declared that he didn't allow any fallen activity in Japan, if they are doing something then they are rouge. A slash N, I know a lot of you will lash out on me saying that Azazel is staying in Kyuah which is devil territory why would Shinto faction interfere? But Kyuah is still part of Japan and they thought by staying in Kyuah he was ordering the fallen activity in Japan. The meeting was done and a secret peace treaty were signed by both the parties. And all of them were about to leave. Suddenly Sparta spoke out. Sparta. I need to discuss another serious matter. Everyone's interest was piqued. Sparta, it's regarding my proposal to this beautiful lady. Everyone except two of them fell on the floor. Azazel was about to pull his hair out. Then suddenly Amaterasu answered. Amaterasu, I do don't me mind. But you are too young to marry now. Everyone's jaw was on the floor except those two. Then Sparta answered. Sparta, in that time why don't we date and get to know each other better? Amaterasu, I am okay with that. Chapter 23, Date After all this fiasco the meeting ended. When the trio were returning nobody talked. Azazel and Vali were pretty downcasted. And Sparta had a jolly expression on his face. Suddenly Azazel stopped walking. Azazel, brat you know you almost gave me a heart attack back there. Sparta, I don't know what you are talking about. Azazel, good job Sparta. I am proud of you. Just be careful of Susanna from now on. Sparta, what do you mean? Azazel, Susanna is Lady Amaterasu's brother and when he comes to know about your small love story he won't be happy at all. Sparta, that can be a problem but don't worry about the small stuff, when the time comes I will take care of it. After that, they were making small conversations until they reached their home. Then they continued their daily life for a few days before Sparta received a message from Amaterasu. The message said that she would be free on Sunday and asked Sparta to meet her in front of their meeting venue for their date. Sunday. Today was different Sparta woke up early, he was really excited about his first date. He then went to get freshen up and took a bath and he began to get dressed up. He wore a black pant and undershirt and wore a deep violet blazer on top of the undershirt. The clothes really complimented his looks. He quickly came downstairs to meet Azazel and Vali waiting for him with a smug face. Azazel. I see you are pretty excited about the date brat. Sparta, hell yes I am. Vali, just don't do something I would do. Sparta, yes of course I won't stare at her butt, but dragon emperor. Vali, what did you say? Azazel, calm down and he has a solid point there. Then Sparta went out and went towards their meeting place. He reached there about 9.40am and waited for Amaterasu to arrive. After waiting for ten minutes a magic circle appeared and three people came out of it. It were two male guards who he met in the meeting and Amaterasu. She was wearing a beautiful white one-piece dress which had intricate design braided into it. Her hair was tied behind her head in a single ponytail which made her look more beautiful. She started walking towards Sparta and the guards went back using the same magic circle. Sparta, you look really beautiful and mesmerizing. Amaterasu, why you also look quite dashing. Sparta. Then small we begin my lady. Backslash. Amaterasu, yes. Sparta, when you showed up with your guards for a moment I thought that they would also join us. Amaterasu, they were sent by my brother Tsukuyomi to make sure that you are here to receive me. 
They soon reached a mall. Amaterasu saw few dresses in the store and her eyes started sparkling. Sparta saw that and took her inside the store. At first Amaterasu was really embarrassed that she lost her calm as a goddess. But Sparta assured her that he was happy that she was behaving like a girl should. Amaterasu tried a lot of dresses and decided to buy all of them. Sparta paid for the dresses and asked the shopkeeper to hold onto for them. Since they were on a date they cannot carry around so many bags. Sparta may be smiling on the outside but he was crying tears of blood from the inside. He lost all his savings in one go. He decided to earn some money that he wouldn't face this problem again. Then they went to a restaurant to have their lunch and then Sparta took her to watch a movie. Amaterasu selected a horror movie. Sparta wanted to reject that but then Amaterasu decided to use a lethal weapon puppy dog eyes. Sparta couldn't deny her anymore and decided to sacrifice himself. Then they bought popcorn and cola to eat while watching the movie. During the whole movie Sparta was holding Amaterasu's hand tightly while continuously shaking but on the other hand Amaterasu was watching the movie with sparkling eyes. After the movie ended they got out and Sparta's whole body was shaking time to time. He was still holding Amaterasu's hand. When Amaterasu noticed Sparta holding her hand tightly she got beat red but didn't say anything. Amaterasu, do you know a place from where we can see the sunset? Sparta then took her to a nearby park where they both sat on a bench watching the sun slowly moving towards horizon. Amaterasu, Sparta don't you find it odd that me being the goddess of the sun watching it set? But for some reason I find, dusk is a mysterious, almost magical time, serving as the bridge between the brightness of day and the darkness of night. Sparta, there is nothing wrong with that. Sun sets to that it can shine more brightly on the next day. Amaterasu then leaned closer towards him, which Sparta understood and also leaned towards her and their lips met. When the sun set completely only then they parted from each other. Amaterasu was embracing him. Amaterasu, let me stay like this for a while. Sparta didn't say anything just complied to her by not moving. After few minutes she let him go and after that they both got up and got out of the park. Then they went towards the store to collect all bags of clothes. Then Sparta took her to the place where she was dropped off by her guards. Then she activated a magic circle and contacted her guards. After a couple seconds her guards arrived and waited for her in the magic circle. Amaterasu began to walk towards the circle but she quickly spun back and gave Sparta a quick peck on lips and quickly ran to the circle. Sparta, I am looking forward to our next date. Amaterasu, me too. After saying that she teleported along with her guards and Sparta started walking towards him home. Chapter 24, Millionaire After reaching home Sparta found Azazel and Vala were waiting for him in the dining room. Azazel, so how was your date? Sparta, it was quite nice. So why are you guys waiting here? Vali, we were waiting for you to come home so you can make us dinner. Sparta, straight face, really? Okay let me get freshened up then I will start making the food. And Azazel I need to talk to you. Vali, do I need to leave? Sparta, no it's nothing like that. Azazel I want to know if you know someone from any famous novel publishing companies. Azazel, as a matter of fact I know someone. Why do you suddenly want to know about novel publishers? Sparta, I kind of find out today that a certain amount of finance is needed if want to go on another date. I am thinking of writing a novel. As when I finish writing few chapters you can introduce me to him or her. Azazel, it's okay I guess. And it's her. Sparta then goes to get freshened up and after coming back he made dinner. After having dinner he went to his room to and starts thinking which story he wants to write. After thinking a lot he decided to write Harry Potter. He started writing and soon completed first 10 chapters and then decided to sleep since he was getting really sleepy. Next day he woke up and continued his daily routine up to having breakfast and then started writing again he started to complete the first volume as soon as he can. After hard work of 4 days he was able to complete the first volume of Harry Potter. Then he asked Azazel to take him to his friend in publishing company. Azazel, okay let me get ready we will leave in 30 minutes. Sparta. Okay I will wait here, just come quick. After 20 minutes Azazel comes back in a suit. Then he took Sparta with him towards the publication company. On their way Azazel called his friend and told her that he is bringing someone who wants their company to publish his work. After 45 minutes they reached the company. Then they went in and Azazel saw his friend already waiting for him. So nice to meet you after a long time. How have you been Azazel? Azazel, I have been enjoying my life quite nicely. Sparta meet Nanao Watanabe. Nanao Nanao meet Sparta. Nanao, is this the person you spoke about? 
Is he your son? Azazel, yes I spoke about him and no he is not my son. Nanao, no, no, so Sparta can you show me what you wrote? Sparta, here it is. Nanao, no, no, why not you guys come with me to my office? And I will read it there. Then she led them to her office and gestured them to sit. Then she started reading the novel. While she was reading there were continuous expression change on her face. When she finished the book she had a shocked expression on her face. Nanao, no, no, how old are you really? Did you really write this? Sparta, I am twelve. And I wrote it myself you can ask Azazel. Nanao, no, no, let me show this book to my boss. Then we will be able to talk about your percentage. Nanao no, no got up from her seat and went to show the book to her boss. After thirty minutes she came back with a slim man wearing spectacles. The man came directly towards Sparta and extended his hand. Sparta shook his hand. Ayato, hello my name is Ayato Himura, I assume you are Sparta? Sparta, yes I am Sparta. Nice to meet you. Ayato, I read your book it was really breathtaking that how someone as young as you wrote the book. That's aside let's talk about your share. Normally we give 10% royalty, but since your work is brilliant we are willing to increase it up to 15%. Sparta, that is quite a nice deal for me. I can work with that. Ayato, I also wanted to know when you will be able to complete the second volume. Sparta, not before the end of next month. Will it be okay with you? Ayato, that will be perfect. So why don't we sign the contracts and complete the deal? After that they prepared the contracts and discussed the remaining terms. Sparta decided to use the pen name as Gil. After signing the contracts Azazel and Sparta left the company. Azazel, when did you learn to write a story? Sparta, it just suddenly popped into my head. As expected the book became a super hit in the market. Almost everyone was talking about the book. A month has already passed. At the end of the month Sparta received a check of 2.5 million yen. In this month Sparta went to a date two more times. After the day he made contracts with the publishing company he went to a gold store to exchange money for gold coins. He used a simple genjutsu to make them give him money in exchange of gold coins. He was able to get quite the money from exchanging the coins to he was able to take Amaterasu to other dates without being worried about money. Chapter 25, Burrakil Another year has passed by. Sparta wrote four more volumes of Harry Potter took Amaterasu to a lot of dates and trained every day. In this year Sparta started calling Amaterasu as Amy. He was also planning to buy a house for himself. In this year Vala's nickname of Butt Dragon Emperor was spread out a lot which lead to Albion having daily therapy. Sparta also thought about telling Burrakil about saving his daughter and wife. Sparta, Azazel I want to speak with one of your general Baraquil. Azazel, why do you want to speak to him? Sparta, something related to his family. Azazel, tell me brat what do you know about his family? Sparta, I want to tell him that directly call him you can be also present there. Then Azazel made a magic circle and contacted Burrakil. Azazel, where are you, can you come to my house in Kuaha? Burrakil, I am currently in Grigori but I have to leave for a mission today, I can't come now. Azazel, this is related to your family Burrakil someone wants to talk to you. Burrakil didn't reply and disconnected the call and made a magic circle to Azazel's house and immediately stepped into it. Burrakil then appeared in Azazel's house. Burrakil, Azazel, I am here what do they know about my family? Azazel, here meet Sparta. He is the one asked me to call you. Burrakil, tell me kid what do you know about my family? Sparta then placed a space barrier around them so that no one else be able to hear them. Seeing the barrier both Azazel and Burrakil were shocked. Sparta. I have placed a space barrier so that no one else will be able to hear us. Is your wife's name Shuri Heimjima and daughter's name Akeno Heimjima? Burrakil, yes they are my wife and daughter but they were killed by Heimjima clan when I was away on a mission. Sparta, they are not dead, I have saved them both before assassins from Himajima clan could have killed them. Burrakil, are you telling me the truth? Where are they now? Azazel, how did you save them tell us everything? Sparta. When I was six years old I asked my grandpa to let me go to human world. While I was sightseeing I incidentally came across the Heimjima shrine and became friends with Akeno. I went there every day to play with Akeno. One day I went there found them surrounded by masked assassins so decided to save them. I was holding off the assassins when I told them to run to safety. Burrakil, where are they now? If they are alive why haven't they contacted me till now? Sparta, 
as much as I know they are in underworld under the protection of Gremory clan. Akeno has become the queen of Rias Gremory. Berukiel, so she has become a devil, I guess she hates me. At least both of them are alive. Sparta I don't know how to thank you enough. I will always be in your debt. Azazel, don't worry if they are with Gremory clan then you should not worry about their well-being, they will be treated nicely. Sparta, there is also one more thing I interrogated one assassin and asked where they got information about their house. He told me that they were given this information by a ten-winged fallen angel. He didn't knew his name. Azazel, to think one of our own betrayed us, I will investigate every ten-winged fallen angel in Grigori. Berukiel, thank you for saving my family even if they are not with me. Only knowing that they are alive I am happy. I will be forever in you debt. Azazel find and tell me who did it. I will kill him myself. Azazel, don't worry my friend. You will be first one to now after me. Baraquil was already crying and thanking Sparta. After some time Baraquil went back to Grigori with a happy face. Azazel was also happy for his friend. The rest of the day was completely normal. Next day Sparta was sleeping and Amy came to his room really worried expression and started shaking him to wake up. Sparta opened his eyes slightly and found Amy standing close to him with a worried face. Sparta, Amy it was really nice to wake up seeing your face. But why are you so worried? Amy, I am worried for you. Susanu found out about our relationship and he is not happy at all, he wants to meet you today. Sparta, where are we supposed to meet? Amy, aren't you worried about meeting him? And he is not happy at all. Sparta, it was supposed to happen sometime. If he stands between me and you I will defeat and make him relent don't worry. Amy, are you sure you will be able to defeat him? He is a god, and he will come here to meet you. Sparta, don't worry I will beat him if that will make him relent. Then Sparta got up from his bed and kissed Amy on the lips and went to get freshened up. During the meantime Amy went downstairs and waited for Sparta to join her. Thanks for listening.